Hello. Uh, can you see me? Is it close? Uh, more close, yeah? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, hello. My name is Sergey, and uh, I'm full stack developer at Fleetmatics. And today I will describe uh, how we should organize or wh what libraries we should use for providing uh, data tier in uh, our JavaScript application. It could be server side application or it could be client side application. And uh, uh, we have libraries for that. So let's. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, on the orange box, it's data tier. And uh, main idea of uh, any application, it's uh, just uh, try to write uh, less code as you can and uh, reuse your code. And uh, simplest applications that uh, usually we do for the prototyping, we just uh, provide one tier for the everything, for the data, for the business logic, for the, uh, let's say, DOM manipulation or uh, some, very uh, different uh, things and uh, uh, with prototypes it's okay because we would like to uh, get something very quick but uh, if we uh, just decided to do some commercial and uh, we would like to reuse our code uh, usually we just uh, divide our application to the presentation layer uh, that uh, has some logic around our UI, uh, some service layers that uh, usually contain all business logic for our application and uh, data uh, tiers that uh, represent all logic connected to the database connection, uh, data manipulation, da data mapping. And also we could uh, uh, improve this idea, let's say to divide presentation layer to the some uh, to two different layers that uh, will be uh, responsible for uh, a, uh, DOM manipulation and some logic that happen around it. But uh, sometimes it's just uh, useless uh, to do that because uh, as we can see on the image, uh, that's just uh, uh, moving uh, some data from one layer to another layer. Uh, layer. And uh, what's advantages uh, and disadvantages to using uh, data layer and uh, providing data layer with ORM, or object relation mapping or ODM object uh, data mapping. And uh, uh, I will start from the advantages and uh, main uh, advantages it's uh, one place for all DB relation code and uh, we could uh, easily change our uh, persistent search. Let's say we will change uh, SQL database to no SQL database. But usually in a real application, it's never happened. But it uh, could uh, happen some extension our persistent layer and uh, we could provide some additional database that uh, just, uh, let's say, faster for reading and uh, slower for writing. And, and uh, also, uh, if we use uh, uh, ORM, then uh, our code is starting to be database agnostic because we just uh, keep a common uh, contract uh, for some kind of uh, data layer, a uh, data tier, and uh, we don't care about uh, some uh, specificity around database or uh, connection to database. And uh, also it's uh, very simple to describe our models because uh, if we use some kind of ORMs, we just provide uh, sch data schema in the ORM and uh, everything else usually happen just under the hood. And uh, we just uh, use common declaration of the models. Also, uh, uh, it's very simple for testing because uh, for our business logic, uh, all our data tier, we could just mock and then uh, just uh, analyze what's uh, interaction with our mock uh, was happen with uh, inside our business logic. And also uh, in case of uh, a lot of boiler boilerplate code uh, implemented inside ORM, uh, then amount of code usually reduce and speed of development uh, very, uh, 
not very, but faster than uh, uh, manual implementation. And also I can't uh, imagine that uh, some complex scenario like uh, providing some caching mechanism or uh, providing uh, audit uh, logging and uh, writing uh, into separate table what was changed uh, during all interaction with database. Uh, I um, guess it's not possible without uh, ORM and uh, uh, separate data tier at all. And uh, also I face some, uh, in my practice, some tasks that uh, uh, we should provide some security system and uh, access level based not on the role and based on the particular uh, data. Let's say uh, some manager could have uh, access to data for one storage but uh, can't have uh, data from other storage. But all storages information just uh, saved into one table in the database. And in that case it's uh, uh, sometimes very difficult because before getting data you should uh, check uh, is it possible to get this data or just provide some specific uh, query to database. And also uh, uh, we have uh, disadvantages uh, around uh, data tier because uh, usually it's uh, less performance than direct access to the database through drivers or because it's just additional logic ju that uh, just should happen. And uh, also uh, in case of the common approach for all uh, operations, usually uh, some details and uh, specificity, specific feature from database usually just hidden under the ORM and uh, uh, we should use just common uh, interface. And also, uh, if you don't know what's uh, happened under the hood of your ORM, and if you just uh, ask uh, data from the ORM, you could uh, easily to face a problem with performance because uh, ORM could just try to provide uh, what you ask, uh, but. Uh, it uh, could take a lot, a lot of more uh, queries to database uh, than if you just uh, uh, provide your own and manual queries. And also it's uh, N plus one issue when you have, uh, let's say, some relation between uh, some models. And if you ask uh, one top level models, then ORM could uh, ask for you some details from the relation and uh, you could you usually could control it, but by default, usually it just do it for you and you have uh, all a bunch of data uh, on the place. And uh, also, uh, uh, for now, let's see what kinds uh, of data uh, tier uh, we have or I know. And uh, uh, usually we could uh, provide manual data mapping because it's uh, usually very thin uh, tier in our application, uh, but it's also organized some common approaches for the uh, uh, communication with, uh, actually let's describe, uh, we have uh, manual approach, it's uh, ORM for one database engine, it's uh, some kind of OData solutions and uh, adapter basic. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, manual imp implementation usually uh, has a uh, most flexible approach and uh, uh, it uh, gives us a lot of uh, possibilities, but it also takes a lot of time and uh, qualification for engineers that implemented manual tier. Uh, they should be uh, very qualified. And uh, uh one DB engine ORMs uh, usually uh, used for the uh, providing uh, additional feature and uh, uh, for testing uh, uh, database uh, uh, access. And uh, for example, uh, Mongoose uh, used for MongoDB, uh, SQLize for SQL, Nohm for uh, uh, Redis, and uh, usually uh, this uh, data uh, tiers or ORMs provide a uh, feature like uh, uh, instead of callbacks you could use promises or some uh, hooks uh, around your queries and uh, uh, you should pick this solution just uh, if you absolutely know that 
you will never change your database. You, uh, you will keep just uh, one kind of storage and then you will live uh, forever with uh, this uh, ORM. Uh, all data solution I found for the uh, JavaScript uh, two uh, kind of solution and uh, JData and Breeze uh, uh, GS. Uh, it, uh, I didn't have a chance to work with it, but uh, uh, for me, it uh, looks very flexible, and if you set up one time all data solution, then you will have uh, access to your database on the client side. And uh, usually for providing all data solution, you should uh, organize uh, all data provider on server side, all data pro uh, mechanisms that provide proper request on the client side. And in the end, it's very complex solution uh, that uh, uh, should be organized everywhere and uh, you should just keep uh, this solution. And uh, also I uh, think that uh, it could be some issue with security because uh, in case of the monolithic implementation, uh, for me it uh, looks very hard to change something. And also in uh, JData, I felt that, uh, let's say, provider for MongoDB, it's, uh, you should pay for uh, that and uh, it's not free in the end. And uh, most flexible, uh, for my opinion, it's uh, adapter-based uh, database uh, where you could easily just change adapters that uh, use under the hood of the, your ORM and data tier. And, uh, uh in this case, uh, it's very simple uh, in the end to change or extend your uh, behavior. And uh, I uh, uh, have uh, a chance to work with some of that uh, examples that I mentioned and uh, I uh <coughs> just speak uh, uh, from there. A lot of different uh, available on the market, just uh, man that uh, just uh, very easy to Google and uh, uh, actually let's start from XTGS. XTGS it's a commercial uh, big uh, framework and uh, inside this uh, framework we have a separate uh, data tier for the uh, browser and uh, it uh, has uh, a lot of uh, different uh, provide uh, not a lot but uh, a few different provider for access uh, to some persistent storage in browser or uh, to provide some Ajax request to the server side. And uh, uh, you could use uh, all uh, stores and models uh, that available in XTJS like a separate uh, a data tier, but usually you should just use these models for the mm, uh, providing data for UI controls. Uh, and uh, also Ember data, uh, it's uh, one of the internal uh, libraries that you use in the framework uh, and uh, it's also extensible by uh, adapters and uh, by default uh, it's available REST uh, uh, adapter, fix fixture and active model adapter but uh, I saw that it's not uh, so hard to extend this adapter and it's easy to provide additional uh, behavior to the, these adapters. And uh, uh, both of them, XTGS and Ember Data, it's uh, client-side libraries that uh, could live just in browser. And uh, next uh, one, it's uh, Waterline. Uh, and uh, this uh, ORM, it's uh, fully for the server side and uh, it uh, has a lot of adapters uh, that uh, support a lot of different uh, storages and uh, uh, it's very good supported <coughs> by community and uh, uh, this uh, ORM has also uh, some kind of unique adapter from my opinion uh, that uh, you could uh, uh, actually get uh, queries to the Twitter or to the some pages and GS DOM adapter. Uh, and also uh <coughs> this uh, ORM support uh, some kind of migration mechanism and uh, it's, uh, I su suppose that uh, it's safety for your data when you update your data model. Uh, also a lot of uh, articles I saw in the internet, it's uh, Falcon 
uh, Falkor GS uh, from Netflix and the uh, idea of this ORM it's providing uh, a lot of data sources on the server side and just one point uh, for the getting data through the virtual JSON object on the client side and it's uh, uh, some kind of uh, for data implementation because all interaction just hidden between the client and uh, server uh, libraries and uh, it's implemented by Falcor JS and you just just consume and uh, also uh, this uh, Falcor JS support promises in each queries and uh, next one it's PoundGDB and uh, it's possible to use uh, on the client and on the server side and depend on the environment uh, this uh, ORM uh, could use different data in uh, DB engine. For example, in the browser, it uh, use uh, by default index DB or web SQL. Uh, in the Node.js, it used level DB. And uh, on the mobile platform, it used uh, uh, SQL Lite. Uh, and uh, a main feature, and I still, uh, uh, main feature of uh, this ORM, it's internal migration mechanisms that you could uh, connect to the CouchDB or CouchBase. And then, uh, for example, if you implement your client uh, for the mobile application on the CouchDB, you could set up your migra uh, mm, <coughs> replication mechanism and uh, uh, just get on your mobile phone just data that you need, not whole data that available or uh, available on the database, and then just use this data in offline. And uh, uh, last one, it's GS data, and uh, it was uh, inspired by Ember data approach, uh, and uh, some guy uh, uh, implement some very common uh, library that uh, could be used on the client or on the server. And uh, uh, I, I uh, have used uh, this library in a couple of my uh, projects, and uh, I'm very satisfied with this library and why I like it. And uh, it's very simple API. Uh, this library has very simple API and uh, uh, everything promise based and uh, uh, code with this uh, library, it's very clean, very small and uh, uh, this library actually small uh, and just uh, 50 or 60 kilobytes uh, and uh, you could use, uh, uh, upload it into the browser or into uh, and use it on the no on, uh, node server. And uh, this li uh, idea of this library, it's uh, providing ma main uh, or core uh, storage, it's in memory storage. And uh, all methods just uh, uh, working with this in memory storage and uh, just a difference uh, with uh, 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 GS data has two sets of me uh, methods. It's uh, synchronous methods and asynchronous methods. Synchronous methods just interact with uh, uh, in-memory storage and uh, if you uh, already get something on the board in the memory storage, then you could very fast uh, to get uh, data from the in-memory storage. And sometimes it's very useful when uh, you know that uh, data already available and you shouldn't provide any promise and you just would like to get some data. And asynchronous method, it's a method that uh, first of all try to get data from the in memory, uh, from the memory, but if this data not available, then uh, uh, you start and use adapter and uh, depend on the adapter, you could uh, get access to some databases uh, or provide a HTTP request or uh, just organize uh, interaction with uh, your persistent storage. And uh, uh, inside th this library has uh, like client-side adapters that uh, cover uh, Firebase HTTP request and uh, imp implement uh, REST, uh, RESTful API that's uh, very nice. And uh, it's also possible just use as local storage or, or local forge that's used uh, Index DB and uh, SQL uh, Web SQL, and uh, on the server uh, available out of the box, it adapters for Level DB, Mongo, Redis, Resync, uh, SQL, and Firebase, and uh, it's easily to extend uh, because uh, behavior by adapters because uh, interface of adapters very simple and. Uh, uh, 
so and uh, <coughs> little bit about feature and uh, as I mentioned that uh, available sync and async methods and uh, uh, you have a lot of uh, hooks uh, into the life cycle of your model and uh, you could easily uh, manipulate your data before getting into the application and provide some logic that's outside of your application logic and that's connected to the data transformation or and uh, also, you could provide uh, and subscribe to event uh, that uh, happen around your model or uh, ch uh, provide change detection. And if you change your model, you could ask uh, this model, does it has uh, changes or subscribe to event about changes and then depend on the uh, model changes, uh, provide some additional logic. Also, you could extend uh, uh, behavior of your model by static methods that connected to the uh, storage or repository or to the models. And also, it's uh, possible to use computed properties uh, and, uh, let's say, to uh, trim lens of some names or uh, that just implemented by computed properties. And also, it's implement query syntax that uh, matched with uh, the JSON uh, that with Ajax request and uh, you could uh, use common query syntax for each of uh, database or uh, remote endpoint. And also it's very useful features of uh, this library. It's validation and uh, relations. And by relations uh, you could easily uh, deliver uh, let's say complex object uh, on the client side and uh, I use uh, relations in my Angular application and um, if I deliver with uh, let's say uh, let's say we have uh, some uh, address ID in our model but uh, based on this address uh, uh, or let's say we, we have uh, city ID in our model, but we would like also to pre-populate this value by a uh, city object that has some name or uh, a, a lot of different properties. And uh, if you provide some uh, complex object from the server side, you could get uh, in one request all this data and by relation resolve uh, your city from the, uh, uh, from other model and uh, it will populate two different storages by one request to the server side. And uh, uh, useful examples that I would like to share for you with this library, I already implement a, a middleware based on the uh, GS data for the Angular build up and uh, it's very easy to extend functionality uh, for the express with uh, this approach and uh, uh, for extend your API you should just uh, declare a new model and then all flow will work with a uh, new set of model and you no need provide any logic at all because middleware care about uh, all parameters that uh, came in the request and you could just or analyze it or just proceed uh, into the GS data. And also we implement hybrid adapters that uh, implement uh, some kind of uh, Temporary, temporary static uh, data that uh, could be just pre-populate one time from the server side and then saved uh, to the persistent stor storage in the browser like local storage and then when uh, user just close and open the browser uh, some piece of uh, static data will be available next time or next day and uh, uh, it will be refreshed uh, with a hybrid adapter just uh, after let's say after a week and uh, you shouldn't update it each time when you instantiate your application and uh, upload everything. And uh, challenges uh, that we uh, faced with the GS data, it's uh, not supported out of the box uh, additional parameters. Let's say if you would like to uh, implement uh, uh, server-side pagination and uh, you should also provide total number of records for each page. Uh, it's just additional parameter for your array and uh, uh, 
it's uh, we just uh, implement this mechanism by hooks and uh, it's not available out of the box and also i face that uh, some developers just try to use uh, common interface uh, not properly as it expected by uh, library and uh, this uh, uh, gs data data has uh, two different uh, methods find and find fall find uh, expect uh, from the server side just one object and not collection but find all uh, expect collection of some uh, of this kind of object and uh, uh, some guys just uh, used find for getting array of data and then uh, gs data uh, review this uh, result array result as a model and it was misunderstanding and uh, with this one and but actually i am really satisfied with this uh, gs data and uh, i really recommend to try it maybe in the pet project or in the production uh, that's it do you have any questions Any questions? Sergey, in using ORM, do you have a recommendation as to uh, a design approach, um, relational model first or object model first or a combination of the two? Uh, what do you mean a relation? So in, ter in terms of... In terms of modeling your data, um, do you start out with the relational model or do you start out with your object model? So the relational model, in other words, design the database tables first or design the object uh, model first? Uh, I would say that uh, better to provide model uh, instead of uh, relational. Uh, uh, you should uh, uh, declare your models and then uh, provide your database tables. And, uh, but, mm. uh, we, uh, we are really use this library on the client side and uh, in the end uh, it's just in our current project it's hard to provide any model, uh, model uh, first uh, approach because uh, we very connected to the store procedures and uh, in that case we not flexible on the data layer at all and uh, 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 we just consume all data through the Ajax request <coughs> but uh, uh, in my uh, pet projects I just use it with uh, no SQL database and uh, there uh, you shouldn't provide any uh, model declaration at all and uh, you could just use uh, your uh, that uh, model schema for data validation hello hello uh, this was uh, just regarding the the issue with the find and find all because mm, I don't know if it is supposed to retrieve only just one result because you uh, usually, when you use you can, you can obtain as many results uh, matching as they, they are, you know. Uh, library just expected that uh, this, uh, uh, from the parameters perspective, you could easily achieve all the functionalities that you expect from the find. By find all, just provide some additional parameters because uh, it's just changing in the, uh, the uh, challenge was uh, with HTTP adapter and uh, it was just a question of the generated uh, uh, syntax for the uh, request. And uh, by find all, it's uh, used like uh, endpoint slash ID of your uh, model, model instance by uh, uh, it's by find and uh, by find all you should just provide additional parameters that will be attached to the, your endpoint name question mark 
name of parameter equal something. And uh, in that case, it's very simple, but it just was misunderstanding kind of uh, the proper using uh, the these uh, methods. Thanks, Sergey. Thank you.